buckle up you lot I've got a good one coming this vlog is finally a vlog oh, I'm getting distracted by listening to my music it's still playing in the zip my chicken's gonna overcook oh no don't you hate it when you put something in the microwave to defrost and it cooks this vlog is finally a vlog all about training shoes, running shoes, training product because while everyone is training at home, it is literally going against all morals of working at ProDirect if I haven't informed you that you're wearing the wrong shoes. I have seen too many runners running in Air Forces, too many people doing lateral side movements in running shoes, and I have seen way too many workout videos wearing yoga bras. It's, it's no one's fault. I also didn't know until I started working at ProDirect. So I'm about to answer your problems, save saggy boobs and save broken ankles. So let me get prepared. Well, let me put my lunch on, get my shit together, and then we'll do this video. Guys, I'm excited about this. Like sometimes with my manifestation videos and stuff, I'm like, do people really want to know this? Whereas this video, I genuinely feel like people need to know. You can hear background sound. It's my chicken cooking in my air, air fryer. <laughs> Let's start. Whoa, 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 whoa. Have you had a couple? You're so wonky, aren't you? Yeah, so there is a huge difference between a running shoe and a training shoe. The main difference between them both is a running shoe, like this one, is designed for movements to go that way. The, the shoe is designed for forward motion movements because that's the direction that you go in when it comes to running. A training shoe, like this one, is designed for lateral movements as well. So that's kind of like the key difference is like a running, you'll always go in that direction. So the shoe is going to be designed for it to go into that direction whereas a training shoe you know when you do things like squat jumps or like weightlifting or anything like in terms of training you might be moving left to right as well so that the shoes designed for that for me the biggest thing of like when I see people wearing running shoes or worse lifestyle shoes there's no support here like you can see that and also when you look at a shoe like that there's no support either side whereas this shoe there's so much structure like can you see this white or grey, white bit here, that's rock hard. So that's there to help support you. And like when you press in here, there's just so much support for those left to right movements. So that's the main point. So please, please bear in mind when you are doing hit and stuff like that, what shoe you're wearing. This Ultra Boost is like the most common that I see on Instagram of people doing all variety of training in them. It's a running shoe, it's designed for forward motion. There's not much support at all if you're going left to right. You'll probably see it as well, like the foot, when you do things like left to right, your toes here will just wanna come out the side. It's not good for you guys, it's really not good. Like it can lead to injury. So the difference between shoes is that it is there to keep you safe. Like, a lot of the time people were just like, oh, they just say that they're designed for that just as a marketing thing. I do agree in some aspects. It's like, do we really need five versions of the same shoe? Probably not. But I am not kidding you when I say like Nike, Adidas, Asics, New Balance, Under Armour, like all of these brands don't just bring out shoes for the fun of it. They have these huge research labs that they are literally analyzing different runners, the human body and how we run and how we move. And then they're looking at different technologies in shoes about how it's going to enhance your training or your running depending on how the body moves. A lot of research goes into it. It's not just that shoe looks cool. Let's call it a Nike React Infinity because it sounds cool. It actually goes a lot deeper than that. So you've got your different running shoes and your training shoes. They're two separate things, so it's really important. Like, don't you don't want to be running long distance in a Reebok Nano or like a Nike Metcon because they're just not providing you the support that you need. And then you have a different kind of fish, which is your lifestyle shoes. This is like your Air Force Ones or your Adidas Continentals, your Vans. These shoes are literally designed to look good. There is no technology that will help prevent you from injury or offer you support that you need when you're doing like running and high impact class and you think of all that pressure going onto your joints you need to have some kind of support there these kind of shoes please don't run in them please don't yeah so you have your lifestyle shoes your running shoes and your training shoes let's go into running shoes because when you look at running shoes that's when it goes further into it so I always get asked what kind of running shoes should I get compared to the whole running team I'm not very knowledgeable on this but I did ask them some information and I know a little bit basic so when you're looking at a running shoe you need to know whether you're a structured runner or a neutral runner and that's by looking at the gait of your foot so when you're running are you staying in a straight line or are you like over pronation or under pronating or is there something going on with the bike bio 
Kamitz. I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> when you run, how are you running? Do you need a little bit more support? Like, are you overpronating or underpronating or whatever? And if you are, that would mean that you would need a structured running shoe. I haven't got one with me, but they tend to be the uglier ones. I won't lie, magpie. I'll put some here. A6 has some good structured running ones. Hova, I think. New Balance. A lot of people will say, oh, you need to have ugly running shoes, like proper running shoes, and you don't. It just depends what kind of runner you are. The structured ones, I will admit, do tend to be a little bit more ugly. I have ran in both neutral and structured, and weirdly, I don't mind either. I think I am a neutral runner more than a structured, because I'm, I'm pretty sure if you are a structured runner, you wouldn't be able to run in neutral ones without having, like, developing some kind of potential injury, like shin splints or like ankle rolls or your knees hurting or something like that. If you're a neutral runner and you try to run in a structured, you might feel like too blocked in. You choose whether you're a structured runner or a neutral runner and you can do that through like gait analysis. So I'll leave the link below, but Pro Direct Running offer a gait analysis service. <laughs> so you can like basically film yourself running on a treadmill, send it in and they'll look at what kind of runner that you are. By the way, I don't know if I need to mention this on here or not. Some of these shoes I was gifted, but that's just because I work for Pro Direct. I'm talking only about Pro Direct because I work for them. I'm not gonna like start telling you about other retailers. This isn't sponsored, like Work Camera told me to do this. I don't know, I felt like I needed to declare. Yeah, you're either structured or neutral. Either one, you would then look at the variety of shoes that there are to offer. So Pro Direct running, have like a huge range, it's a ridiculous amount of range, and then it does kind of come down to brand preference, look preference, that's when you can start to kind of like choose your colours and what they look like. What I tend to find is like people go on and they're like, what shoe do I want? And they just go for the one that they like, and actually that probably isn't the best shoe for them. So when I spoke to Katie on the running team, she said for a structured running shoe, go for like the Asics Gel Keanu, and then if you're a neutral runner, then the Nike Pegasus are a really good one and I used to run only in Pegasus. They're really nice to run in, really really nice. So I, I've done like a couple of half marathons and like 10Ks and stuff in them. I really like those actually. Hmm. But I've also got these fresh foam ones by New Balance. I did get gifted these at the London Marathon last year but again like they just offer a lot of support. You need to like try out shoes and like work out what you're after. This for some people will be way too much foam but I, I don't mind them. So yeah you've got New Balance, Vega, Vija. So if you're vegan, they're a good runner for you potentially. And then you've also got like the Adidas Ultra Boost. I don't get on with Ultra Boost. I don't think they're the best runners and I'm pretty sure in the industry in terms of like running, I don't think they're that well received as an actual running shoe. So yes, yeah, so you have structured and neutral and then you even have like different varieties of like speed shoes or like trail running shoes and stuff like that. Really, if you get like your structured or your neutral right, then you're kind of all right. Nike have also developed other shoes, which okay, yeah, I guess could be a marketing thing but I've seen the technology and I've seen how they break it down and it makes sense so this is a new one that they launched this year this is the Nike react infinity shoe and it is designed to help prevent injury basically like you've got a wider sole here to help it's part of the react foam which offers like good cushioning then they've also got the Nike joyride which is said to be like recovery shoes if you like you have loads of different variety of shoes there is a reason for it because each shoe will have something slightly different. The Nike React Infinity, you probably have also heard of like the Nike Epic React, the React Metcon maybe. That's because the React thing comes from the technology used in the shoe. So this is the React foam. So the name comes from the technology in the foam. That's why there's loads of different varieties of like Reacts if you like. Oh, and then you've also got like the speed. There's the Nike Alpha Fly, which is like brand new. I'm pretty sure like Mo runs in that and that's designed for speed. So they've looked at like how the shoe like shapes like that to make sure you're really streamlined and stuff like that. It's amazing when you look into the technology. I feel like that's it on running shoes, you know? Make sure it is a running shoe and then work out whether you're neutral or structured. Then you can kind of be a little bit more free on like your favorite brands or your favorite choice, but just make sure you are wearing a proper running shoe. Then the training shoes. This is where I feel a little bit more comfortable. The top two like cross training shoes, if you like, I would say are the Nike Metcon 5 and the Reebok Nano. Unfortunately, I don't have a pair of the Metcons. I would absolutely love a pair, but I can't bring myself to buy a pair when I am very lucky in that I get gifted quite a few pairs from 
being at events and stuff. You should just invest in them because I absolutely love them. I would say those two are like my two favourites, but you also have Adidas Alpha Bounce, which I really, really like as well. Sorry, I wore them out on a walk once. Your Nano and your Metacons are really good for, they're really flat soled like this, so they're great if you're into lifting weights and want to do like squats and deadlifts and stuff. They're also really supportive either side and they also have some cushioning, so they're really good for like high intensity stuff. So if you do CrossFit or just any kind of cross training, your Nike Metcons are really good and also your Reebok Nanos. If you want to get a little bit more confusing, you also have like different varieties of the Nike Metcons, so you will have the React Metcon, which is even softer because it will have the React foam in them. And then you also have like Freeze, which again are a little bit more flexible. It's just about looking into it. But if you're into lifting, I would go for the Reebok Nanos or the Nike Metcons, personally. Then, if you're into like HIIT training and you're not too fussed about lifting weights, like oh, I don't really enjoy it, but you're more into like HIIT classes or just doing like general classes, you have got the Nike Super X. Now this is designed specifically for high intensity workouts. So there's uh, loads of support, really good for high impact, slightly wider here to help with those lateral movements. Like these are amazing for high intensity workouts. When you're doing things like box jumps and stuff like that, you can really feel the support and the cushioning to help with your joints. But then and you've also got like the Adidas Alpha Bounce, which again is really wide on the bottoms just to help with those lateral movements. So yeah, if you're doing high intensity stuff, I'd recommend these two. And then you also have like takedown versions of shoes. This is the Nike Super Rep, which is over a hundred pound, but they've just launched the Nike Super Rep Go, which is like the takedown of that shoe, which is slightly cheaper. I think that's around like 80 pounds. These are around 80 pounds as well. I'll leave all the links below. They aren't affiliate links, but they are linked to Pro Direct because obviously Pro Direct. Life. That's really the training shoes that I'd go, I'd talk about. Finally, you have lifestyle shoes, which I know I mentioned earlier, but these are literally designed just to look good. Please don't do anything performancey in them. Adidas Originals don't run in, that's all lifestyle. Puma have very limited amount of training stuff. Again, like just making sure that you're not trying to do any high performance exercise in a lifestyle shoe. You won't perform as well. You're kind of asking for a little bit of an injury. That is footwear. Now before I finish, I need to talk, my chicken's done. I need to talk about sports bras. Claire, this is for you if you're watching, which I know you are. There are three different types of sports bras. Sports bras for low intensity, sports bras for medium intensity, and sports bras for high intensity. Ladies, your breath tissue is very, very sensitive, and once it is stretched, it will never go back to normal. So once your tits have sagged, they've sagged. It's as simple as that. It's also really, really sensitive tissue as well. It can be affected really easily, so when you're doing things like burpees, squat jumps, running, any form of hit, any high impact exercise, you should be wearing a high impact bra. And that is one like this. The high impact ones tend to be like the most ugly. This is actually one of the really nice ones. It's expensive, that's why it's nice. But you want so much support. So these are the ones that will feel really tight. And when you jump up and down, you will not get any movement at all. You need to be making sure that you're getting really, 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 really enough support. You need to be making sure you're getting enough support. So a nice strong back, uh, really tight straps, making sure it is really tight against the skin. This is is another high impact one as well. You should normally on any like on most good sites you can shop by intensity to make sure you're getting the right one. Just making sure that it's suitable for the exercise that you're doing. Also bras don't have a long shelf life so as soon as they start to feel like loose around the straps or like loose around here, it's gonna be loose in the cups. So once they sag, you can never go back. And then you have like medium impact ones, which I don't actually have one to show you, but that's good for stuff like weightlifting, cycling, different types of movement. That's like, there is a bit of intensity. You will need a bit of support there, but you, you're you not like running where like they're literally like jogging up and down. And then you finally have light support bras. Claire, pay attention. Now these are the ones where the straps are like this and they make your boobs look great, pretty v-neck. The lightweight bras tend to be the prettiest. I've got one on now, actually. Sports bra, don't worry. They tend to be really strappy and really nice at the back. Oh, God. 
It's got a nice strappy back. That's because when I do things like yoga and Pilates and, and walking, I don't need any support. Like yoga isn't very high intensity. Look at how strappy that back is. And it's just like mesh really, like there's barely any support. Those ones are fine to do yoga and stuff like that in. But if you're doing burpees and running and stuff like that, then guys, it's so bad. It's so, so bad. Once they sag, you can't unsag. I hope that helps. I feel like I've tried to cover it. I might try and complement it maybe with a blog post just to like put in a few products. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that, but I do work for ProDirect. Obviously, I'm going to support them, but I do think it's really important that I share the knowledge that I've gained over the years at ProDirect to try and help you guys because I completely get that training shoes and training kit can be an absolute minefield. I hope that helped. If it did, then please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. It's slightly different to the woo-woo ones that I've been talking about recently. Please help share it because it really does support me. If you've got any questions slide into my dms on instagram i'll put a list of my recommended shoes down below as well